NCR Corporation is a leader in omnichannel solutions, turning everyday interactions with businesses into exceptional experiences. With its software, hardware, and portfolio of services, NCR enables nearly 700 million transactions daily across financial, retail, hospitality, travel, telecom, and technology industries. NCR solutions run the everyday transactions that make your life easier. NCR is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia, with about 30,000 employees and does business in 180 countries. What's going on, folks? How's everybody doing today? Last session of the day, right? Do you guys enjoy your speakers today? Awesome, awesome, that's amazing. Well, I know I'm the last session, but the energy that's required to take in the message that I have for you guys today is a little bit higher than where you guys are at right now, all right? So we're gonna do a little activity called activation energy. Does anyone know what that is? Raise your hand if you know what that is. Oh, we have some geniuses in the room. That's amazing. So activation energy, for those of you that don't know, is a term in chemistry. And it's defined as the amount of energy, the minimum amount of energy necessary to put into reactants to cause a reaction and produce products, right? So here's what that translates to for you guys today. I'm going to put energy into you guys. You guys are going to react. And then we're all going to produce a beautiful product together. Sound cool? All right, so here's what we're going to do. On a count of three, I need everybody to stand up, all right? One, two, three. Everybody up. Brilliant. Brilliant. You guys are brilliant. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is, and I don't want you guys to do what I do yet. We're going to have a chance to do it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little beat, all right? So you guys have been in stadiums before. You guys ever done the boom, boom, clap? The doom, doom, clap. Boom, boom, clap. All right, not yet, not yet, not yet. All right, so here's the thing. Since we're at XSTEM 2019, what I want to do is I want us to do a chant with that, all right? That's a lot of things at once. It's a little bit of a challenge, but I think we can do it, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go boom, boom, clap, stem, boom, boom, clap, stem. And as my hand rises, our volume rises. Make sense? Okay, all right, here we go. We're going to do that now, all right? You guys ready? Here we go. Great job, guys. G W O D J O B. Good job, good job. All right, so now that I've gotten you guys a little bit energized, I'm going to introduce myself once again very quickly. My name, for all intents and purposes today, is Mr. Fascinate. All right, and why don't you guys repeat that, Mr. Fascinate. Mr. Fascinate. Awesome. And I travel all over the country and now, recently, all over the world, exciting kids about STEM by speaking to them and providing programs, right? So these are a couple places that I've been. But in addition to that, I do cartoons. I created an animated series called Hood Science. You guys heard a little bit about that before. And right now in New York City, we're working on a little project called the Magic Cool Bus. We're building a bus to travel all over the country again and excite kids, students, young people just like you guys about STEM. But guess what, guys? I wasn't always a STEM advocate. I wasn't always excited about STEM. In fact, we're going to do a little 10-year challenge here. So this is me, give or take, about 10 years ago. All right? <laughs> so I was the guy, this is me in chemistry class, OK? I was the guy who was not interested in STEM. That's me with my thumb down in chemistry class. And I was also you know, acting up, doing whatever I could to cause a distraction in class. Little fun fact here, at this time, my Twitter at name was what that booty do. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I just, I... <laughs> yeah, I was that kind of kid, right? Class clown, goofing off, acting up, right? So, some of you guys might be thinking, you guys might have a burning question. How did I fall in love with STEM? How did I go from what that booty do to Mr. Fascinate, right? <laughs> 
So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about that journey, my personal journey, and through that, you guys are gonna learn why I think STEM is dope. And I think it's gonna be very informative for you guys. You guys ready for that? Let's make it happen. So in order to understand where I'm from and understand my perspective, you need to understand where I grew up. I grew up in Chicago, right? But not this glamorous part of Chicago that you guys see in these beautiful pictures on the internet. I grew up in the south side of Chicago. How many of you guys know about the south side of Chicago? Okay. Well, for those of you that aren't familiar, we're often portrayed in the media as the place with all the gun violence, all the gang violence, all the crime, all the negativity, right? And I'll say that media exaggerates things a lot, but some of that stuff was real. When I was you guys' age, I had friends that are now incarcerated. I have friends that passed away because they were shot and killed. One of them was pumping gas at a gas station. That, that's my reality, that was my reality as a kid, right? And even when I was younger, when I was an eight-year-old kid, I would see this thing on TV all the time. Uh, it, it said, there was, a, there was a statement, this is commonly stated, we have more black men uh, that are in prison than in colleges, right? So I was an African-American male raised by a single parent on the south side of Chicago, Illinois, right? So I always thought that, you know, there wasn't a future for me, there wasn't hope for me. When I was eight years old, this crazy story, I saw one of these kind of things and I looked at my mom, I said, mom, am I going to jail? And she chuckled, she thought it was funny, she laughed at it. Uh, but what happened is, as I became more of the traditional bad kid, I was acting up in class, my grades got worse, she started to cry when she thought about that, right? This is, is my son really gonna be a part of this statistic because of this environment that he's in? So she did one of the smartest things that any parent could do. I, I encouraged some parents in the room to do this. She made me sign a contract. Now, I was 14 years old, so technically the contract's not legally binding. But she said, I'm working hard to provide for you, and what I want you to do is figure out a way to pay for college. Can you do that for me? She made me sign a contract saying when I was 14 years old, yes, I can do that. I had no idea how to do that. But I became a lot more aggressive. I took my grades more seriously. My test scores started to go up. And I started doing my research. I found out this is factually incorrect. The scientist in me early on did his research and found out that this was misinformation. So that encouraged me, that motivated me to go to school. I ended up going to school on full scholarship, right? And this was a scholarship, thank you guys. So part of this scholarship came from the, the hard work that I did in high school, but another part of it came from scholarships and internships. See, here's the thing about going into a STEM major in college. There's so much money out there. Everybody say cha-ching. Cha Man, there's so much money out there for anyone that's trying to get in STEM that's a student and even after you become a student. So there's NASA, there's the National Science Foundation, NOAA, Google, Intel, all of these kinds of STEM organizations give out money to young folks like you guys. And because I was a hustler and because I was diligent and I worked hard, I found those scholarships and I figured out a way to pay for school. That's an important lesson for you guys. So let's get into college, right? So I'm in STEM, I'm now a marine and environmental science major and I'm in my laboratory, but I had this weird thing that I like to do, right? You see me here presenting my poster that was more fun to me than being in the laboratory doing the research. Now, don't get me wrong, I think research is extremely important. The work I do today wouldn't be possible without researchers. But for me, I just didn't feel like it was a good fit, right? But my professors would joke at me because I was kind of the class clown still, but I was a little more serious about my grades. So they would be like, oh, here comes this guy coming in again to give us another speech. And, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe I can speak professionally or make a career out of this, but I didn't know how. I wasn't Mr. Fascinate yet, right? <laughs> so I had all these amazing experiences as a result of my STEM education. I had an internship in the middle of the, I had an internship in Georgia where we went out to the open ocean. How many of you guys know what light pollution is? Light pollution. Light pollution is an interesting phenomenon, right? So in cities, there's so much light that at nighttime it drowns out the beauty that is the night sky. This also throws off the sleeping cycles of animals and it's a, a form of pollution, right? So growing up in Chicago, 
And you guys, if you guys are in the DC area, you guys experience this a lot. And even in New York City, they experience a ton of light pollution. But here, at this internship in the open ocean, I experienced the night sky with no light pollution. And I'll tell you, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. But here's something else that you guys wouldn't have guessed. I was getting paid right here. Now it looks like I'm posing for a photo shoot or something, right? <laughs> but I actually was getting paid to do dolphin watching here. Now, mind you, there was hard work that was going on during this internship, but this was one of the super fun parts. These are experiences that I never would have had. Remember, I was this little kid growing up on the south side of Chicago. These are experiences I never would have had if it wasn't for STEM. I got to work in the White House, or right next to the White House. I got to bowl in the White House. I did several White House tours. And I worked and presented with folks all over the Office of Science and Technology Policy as one of the interns as well. This was a different internship. Another paid experience. I got paid to do this. This is my reality. And how many of you guys know about student loans and debt? I know my parents here have their hands with no bent elbows up, right? So student loans are something that most students have, right? But this is something that I didn't have to experience, and a lot of my colleagues in STEM didn't have to experience. This was completely different for us, right? And that can be a possibility for you guys if you look for the scholarships and the internships that are out there, right? So I was doing this whole science thing, the policy thing, the laboratory thing, but I kept coming back to this speaking thing, you know? How can I be a speaker and still be in STEM? Because I wasn't uninterested in STEM. But I wanted to mix the two, and I didn't understand how. And my professors just kept telling me, well, do more research. You think like a scientist. Be a researcher. But that's not what I wanted to do. I, I was set on this speaking thing. I just didn't know how, right? Well, thankfully, thankfully, STEM taught me how to find out what I don't know. So in my experiences in the laboratory, you do a lot of problem solving, right? You do a lot of problem solving unsupervised. No one's there to hold your hand and tell you what's right, what's wrong. You need to figure it out for yourself. And thankfully, I was educated and learned those skills and took those skills outside of school. So when I graduated from school, what I knew about STEM was the tip of the iceberg. How many of you guys have heard of the movie Titanic? Okay. Not all hands raised? I'm getting old. That's not good. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the idea, though, for any of you that don't know, is that Titanic is this massive ship and they see this small chunk of ice above the water, and they're like, oh, we're a huge ship. We're never going to sink. We're just going to blow right through this thing. They don't know that beneath the surface, there's this vast chunk of ice, and it sinks a ship that we once thought to be unsinkable. A tragic story about humans not looking beneath the surface, right? So what I learned through STEM was to be able to see, and this is why STEM is so dope to me, why I was able to see beneath the surface. I would look for myself and find answers for myself on my own. So I would go on Google and I would figure out how people would speak and learn to speak and, and create all these kinds of YouTube content, all that kind of stuff. What I ended up doing was, after I got into this tech job, I continued to learn more on my own. I would problem solve on the side. I would be figuring out things on the side. I ended up building my first PC. And this is something I always wanted to do when I was a kid, but I never had the means financially. I never had the opportunity to. But finally, when I was able to build my first PC, that's when everything started to coalesce and materialize. That's when things went to a whole nother level. Everybody say whole nother level. Hope you guys said that with a V, nother. Hope you guys did that. <laughs> so for me, this computer started everything. Right? This is a computer that's capable of producing multimedia, cartoons, videos. But I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. But guess what I learned in STEM? I learned how to learn. That's why STEM was dope to me. So I taught myself this video production stuff, this animation stuff, how to mess around with audio. And I turned my apartment around. So you see this apartment. It's some, some gear all over the place and maybe some disheveled things. I turned my apartment into the nerd paradise. Right? <laughs> That's what I call it, the nerd paradise. And the nerd paradise is a concoction of STEM gadgets, VR headsets, mini drones. You see some camera gear there, uh, microscopes, a picture of a rocket. I actually painted that thing. I know it looks like a five-year-old did it, but <laughs> that was me. In addition to that, you see a couple of cool animation things I did back there. But I was able to build this thing on my own from skills I learned in STEM. And that's something that you guys will be able to do, too, 
when you guys learn the, how to learn when you're in STEM. That's informal and that's outside of school. So I ended up creating this business called Fascinate. Put STEM and culture together. I designed all these characters and we started doing what was the most important thing to me, which was being the role model that I didn't have when I was a kid. So we started doing these programs with Microsoft and traveling to different schools and speaking to kids and engaging them with VR headsets and things like that, right? We were making STEM dope for them. And one of the things that you guys should understand is you guys are gonna learn a lot about STEM. How many of you guys are planning to pursue a STEM career either a major in college or, wow, that's amazing. So you guys are gonna go to those schools and they're gonna teach you amazing things. What they're gonna give you is very specialized knowledge about one part of STEM. You're not gonna see the whole picture of what STEM is. And if you want to find out more, a lot of that you're gonna to have to learn on your own in informal places, museums, YouTube videos, right? So STEM is dope because once you learn how to learn, you get faster, you get more efficient at that. People even think you have superpowers, all right? So that's when we came up with this idea of the magic cool bus. And we built a prototype for it, and we were able to showcase that prototype, and now we're going after funding, and we're actually gonna build a bus. But that's because of the skills that we got from STEM. STEM is really, really dope to me, okay? But here's why STEM is dope to me as a recap. Cha-ching, right? You get money to go to school a lot of times, you get scholarships, you get internships, but even after that, how many of you guys know STEM careers are the highest paying careers right now? Like, you can make more than your parents in your first two or three years after college if you go in STEM. Hope your parents won't be mad about that. But STEM is where the money's at. Now money's not everything, but money can solve a lot of problems. STEM gets you from zero to hero, <laughs> right? My 10 year challenge, <laughs> this, is, this is my 10 year challenge, right? Uh, so, you know, before I was this unmotivated kid, I wasn't super inspired, I didn't think STEM was that cool, but once I really found out what STEM was, I was able to create my own things, create my own vision for what I wanted STEM to be, and that's the same thing that you guys can do too once you guys get the superpowers that is STEM education. I'm sure some of you guys already have them if you're in robotics teams and coding camps and things like that. But the most important thing to me about STEM and the most important reason why STEM is dope is that with the powers I've been given, I've been able to give back. And that's something you guys should think about. Actually, I want, I want you guys to think about that right now. All right? So let's have everybody close their eyes. I want you guys to see the back of your eyelids right now. And think about yourselves. Think about your 10-year challenge 10 years from now. Who are you gonna be 10 years in the future? What is that person gonna accomplish? What is that person gonna be up to? What projects are they gonna be doing right now? All right? That person is gonna be amazing if you work hard. Now open your eyes. Now here's the thing. That person is gonna be amazing, I'm sure of it, if you work hard. But you're gonna be faced with two choices. You're gonna have a fork in the road. It's gonna be either you take the gifts, the superpowers, that is a STEM education, and use it for personal gain, or you use it to impact the world and ensure that the future is a better place for the next generation. That is up to you guys. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Mr. Fascinate, and that is why STEM is dope to me. Thank you.